Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about VPN pricing and I've made videos on this before talking about, you know, what are the cheapest VPNs and stuff like that. But today I want to take more of a kind of a generalized look at VPN pricing in terms of what I would consider standard uh, VPN pricing. What is the price that you should be looking for as well as taking a look at kind of a broad spectrum of some VPNs that are super expensive and some that are probably really cheap. So guys, the first one we're gonna take a look at is iVPN. Now, in terms of its general like kind of rating, iVPN is not a bad VPN. It's pretty secure and private, and it's overall has a decent reputation. However, it's notable because it's probably the most expensive VPN out there. Um, it's $15 a month for the one month plan, which is pretty insane. Now, the quarterly plan here is $13 and dollars and 33 cents a month or 40 dollars quarterly so that would be 40 dollars for every three months um in turning the annual plan it's a hundred dollars which isn't you know extremely bad another thing i do kind of want to talk about is um express vpn as well and so with ivpn and express vpn these are two vpns which are both a hundred dollars a year and they both don't really have, you know, two to three year commitment plans, which is something I kind of respect. These VPNs, if anything, are saying we're expensive. We think we're worth it. Either buy us or don't. They don't really have any manipulative kind of um, pricing plans in some ways. I think um, iVPN is a little bit more transparent here um, with the way the pricing scheme is laid out. Um, but also, I've seen ExpressVPN advertise itself on websites and then affiliates will advertise it this way, probably because they're encouraged to do so in that it's only, you know, as low as six sixty seven a month um, for, you know, extra three months or something like that, that they'll bundle in for affiliates. So I don't think it's quite as transparent pricing plan as iVPN, but I do think these are two VPNs that are good examples of, you know, just being expensive, almost for the sake of being expensive because they want to have like this kind of premium product feel, even if they're not, you know, that much better. And then we could take a look at some other VPN providers like CyberGhost, for example. Now CyberGhost is similarly priced to ExpressVPN around $13 a month. And, you know, it's not as expensive as iVPN, but again, iVPN is one of the most expensive. Uh, but the, the way it works here is that they're doing another kind of pricing trick here. They're adding a best value kind of deal for three years, encouraging you to go in on a longer term commitment to save money. So in my opinion, this kind of VPN pricing plan is not as tr transparent or kind of honest as the pricing plan with ExpressVPN and iVPN. Another one that is pretty transparent and good is Perfect Privacy. It's $13 a month. Um, and it's going to be $120 a year, which is actually more expensive than both iVPN and ExpressVPN. Um, Perfect Privacy here does do a two-year plan, um, but they don't really bundle it in too much to try to get you to buy it. It's still going to be $215, um, which isn't really saving you that much money. So you can go for the two-year plan if you want to, but it's not really necessarily pushing you into it to save a lot of money it's just like well if you want two years you could buy and spend a lot of money as well so there you go but right with cyber ghost you could either pay $13 a month which people will probably be like that's too expensive $72 a year is a much better deal than $13 a month so there's really not even much point in getting the one month plan um the three-year plan gets even a better deal in terms of you know per month basis um around ninety hundred dollars so why would you even buy one year when you could just get three years for $100? This is pushing people into this three-year commitment and it only has a 45-day money-back guarantee. Now, I will give CyberGo some credit here. Some VPN providers that offer three-year plans like NordVPN only offer 30 days money-back guarantee. So I think 45 is definitely more consumer-friendly. But I think some VPNs, if they really want to sell these three-year deals, which I don't think they ever will do, it would be interesting to see them kind of push a prorated, you know, refund. So let's say you use one or two years, um, the remaining kind of percentage of, you know, revenue left in your plan that you haven't used, you could get a refund on that. That would be very consumer friendly and something pretty cool that I don't think we'll ever see with these VPN, you know, long commitment plans. But just like CyberGhost, there's also NordVPN. And it's probably one of the most infamous VPNs for having this sale go on. Now with CyberGhost, it's not you know so clear that it's a sale. It just seems more like normal pricing. 
But with NordVPN, it's clear that they're trying to make this seem like an exclusive offer. And this sale literally goes on every day, every week of the year. It's not exclusive, it never ends. And they're really trying to push you into this three year plan. The one month plan is not as egregious as some of the other VPN providers that we've seen already on this list. It's not $13, but it's still pretty close at $12. Now the one year plan is $83, so unlike CyberGhost, it's not quite as attractive. But again, three year plan, just like CyberGhost, is $100 for three years. So it's clear they really want you to get into this plan and it is only refundable for 30 days. They even go so far as a saying this includes the biggest savings, so they clearly want you to do that. So in terms of the standardized pricing here, we can see examples like Perfect Privacy, which are just like, oh, we're expensive. You could buy us or not. We're not going to push you into long commitment plans that you might not be able to get out of. iVPN, the same kind of deal. ExpressVPN, they might be a little dishonest with how they advertise their pricing sometimes to trick people. Maybe $667 a month when it's you know more like $100 up front for a year. And of course, CyberGhost and, uh, you know, going into NordVPN, pretty similar to CyberGhost and how they do it. But they really do make it seem like it's a special deal when it really is always going on all year. Now, we also have some other options out there, which I'm going to be talking about right now. Take AirVPN, for example. It never really has promo codes. It hardly ever has sales. Really, the only time it ever has sales is like on its like birthday. It's a little bit cheaper, maybe a couple bucks cheaper um, for every plan. Um, but it's always consistently a good price. Uh, it's $2.21 for three days, $7.72 for one month. I do also want to mention I like the three day plan for two bucks. You know, a lot of people were trying some of these VPNs that offer three year commitments and, you know, they don't like it after a couple days. So I think it's pretty consumer friendly that AirVPN is, you know, pricing it as an option. You don't really see it with other VPNs, which is cool. And additionally, the six month. One year, $54, extremely cheap. Two years, $87. And three years, it's just as cheap as NordVPN and CyberGhost. But the difference here, as you can see, it's not pushing you into these three year, two year plans because the one month plan is still very affordable. You could buy that if you want to. The one year plan is also very affordable. It's not too expensive for these commitment plans to push you into three year plan. It makes it affordable for every plan and it really gives the consumer the choice. This is something I really like and actually something like VPN providers like Molvad are very aware of. So Molvad is interesting because it doesn't really offer any difference in any pricing plan. So something like AirVPN is good because it's affordable in every plan and it will give you discounts for signing up to one year. Uh, and I think that is kind of like the perfect model. Uh, whereas something like Molvad kind of takes an opposite approach and gets even, you know, more transparent about how it works um, so they only ever do the same plan for every single option so you could pick one month so that's gonna be five euros um, and then you could just keep subscribing um, without even committing and it's gonna end up at sixty dollars a year or if you don't want to have to keep you know paying monthly or whatever you could just pay up front and it will be the same price so there really is no push at all to go to cheaper plans at all um, and I think that actually could be considered a con in this case because if you really do like Molvad, it's not like you could sign up for a longer commitment and you know you're going to like it and get a cheaper price. You're just going to be paying the same for everything. There was good transparency in that and Molvad even talks about it on their website. They believe a fair pricing model that provides ultimate transparency and flexibility for our customers is very good. And I actually quite do like Molvad's reputation and transparency in how they organize this pricing system. But like I said, since they don't have any sales, since they don't have any incentive for signing up for you know longer term commitment plans, but also having good prices for each model, it can be a little bit limited. And then we also have something like Torcard VPN, which takes a completely different approach in my opinion. Not only do they have a wide variety of different plans you could choose from that are pretty different from other VPN providers, um, they also offer pretty good discount codes. Now you could be even talking to live chat, they'll give you a discount code, you could use my code TomSpark for 50% off all these prices, or the code Netflix for 50% off the streaming bundle. These codes go on all year and they're permanent discount prices, which means that there's no exclusivity in terms of you know pricing, um, like we did see with NordVPN and stuff like that. <clears throat> but the cool thing about TorGuard as well as you know something like AirVPN, 
Um, they do have a fair pricing for every model. They give you quarterly and semi-annually options, which is not always the case with every VPN provider. And each one of these plans is extremely affordable. So I think it takes kind of the best parts of, you know, Air VPN having that fair kind of pricing model. It takes the best, um, you know, kind of cheap price of something like Molvad. So TorGuard has $5 a month, which is comparable to Molvad. But unlike Molvad, you can also sign up for a year and it's only going to be $30 for an entire year, which is much better than Molvad's $60 and even cheaper than AirVPN as well. So I think this combines the best pricing practices, in my opinion. You can see the discount code working here. Only $5 a month with my 50% off recurring discount. Anyways, guys, this was my kind of extended analysis comparing some of the most expensive VPN providers, some of the tactics and pricing plans they use, as well as comparing them some, some more of the transparent and honest pricing systems I've noticed in VPN. Let me know what you think of this video down in the comments down below. Let me know if you have any future ideas or suggested content you would like to see on the channel. And as always, thanks for subscribing to Tom Spark Reviews. Check out VPNTierList.com for my extended rating system and ranking system of all the VPNs I've reviewed this year, as well as the encrypted email tier list as well. Thanks for checking out the channel, guys, and I'll see you again very soon.